and due to some shenanigans from the U.S. government and the Bush administration, who helped rig an election, they put a right-wing government in and launched this war on drugs, the, the Mexican version, where something like 55,000 people have been killed in cartel violence in the last few years. Uh, this has resulted in this kind of slamming shut of the border. <clears throat> it's my personal opinion that this whole war on the cartels thing was just a ruse. It was just a well-orchestrated plan to give the American government a reason to slam the border shut. And the reason they're doing that is not just because of immigrant labor, but because millions of undocumented Mexicans come into America, work, and then send their money back to Mexico. And that's a big no-no for the United States government. So it's those people that they're after. But the Americans get rounded up as well. There's a point in the film where we get a call from this group called Prevencasa. It's a charity that hands out needles and clean water and everything down in the sewer. And they keep very detailed census on the population down in the sewers. And they took us down there for a couple of tours, and then they told us to kind of meet them at uh, the governor's mansion because the government had decided to send two bus loads of immigrants or of deportees back to their families. And we got there, and we realized that the deportees, yeah, they were there, they were getting on a bus, but none of them spoke any English. They were all wearing clean clothes. They had suitcases, and we suddenly realized, oh wow, these are migrant farm workers that don't speak any English and that have families here. And so they're being sent back and put on a bus because when they get to the border, someone meets them and says, hey, do you have family here? And if they say yes, they call up their family, they say, hey, is this uh, Javier your son? Can we send him home? And if they say yes, then the person gets to go. In Mexico, family's everything. If you don't have family, then you're abandoned to the streets, and that's the case of most of the Americans. I also look at, you know, a couple of other stories, all of them equally tragic. Um, <clears throat> it's a real problem and hardly anyone knows about it. Oh, I've only got a couple minutes here, so I'm just gonna wrap up really quick. Cognitive liberty is the ability to learn, to feel, to experience life, to medicate yourself, to educate yourself, to operate in the manner that is best suited to you and your being, your brain, your functioning patterns, what have you. <clears throat> this war on consciousness is also a war on this cognitive liberty, this ability for us to decide what medicines and foods and things we want to put into our bodies and which ones we don't. None of this is going to change unless everybody in this room does something about it. Every last one of you. Every last one of you is here at a psychedelic festival enjoying yourself. But that freedom that you have to enjoy yourself at this festival comes at a cost. For every one of you that's here enjoying yourself, there's probably 10 people in prison for something close related to this. There's like 27,000 people here at this festival. There's millions of people in prison for doing the exact same thing that you guys are doing right now, going out to do tonight, and will continue to do for the rest of the week. Right? So what's the difference? Why should you guys be here enjoying yourselves at a festival and they should be in prison? It doesn't make any sense. But it will only last as long as you allow it to last. And the freedom that we have will last only as long as you are willing to defend it. If you let them take it away, they will take it. Trust me, they don't want you to have it in the first place. And that's just real. Uh, the small 1% of the world that runs and controls everything are afraid of you. They are terribly afraid of you, particularly if they got to see uh, some video of what's going on over at that dance temple right now. They'd be real afraid of that. And what I'm saying is, they don't have to be, but they are. So let them be afraid. But when the moment comes, stand in your power, speak your truth, be who you are, don't back down, and stand for some real freedom. This war can be won, you know, and without all the semantical debates of, well, you can't wage war on an inanimate object, which is what people say that all the time when I talk about this, as a way of deferring the argument. Instead, I say this is a real war. I am a veteran of this war. All the people that raise their hands are veterans of this, that war. And we're glad, to, we're glad to see you guys here. Thanks for making it out. I give a whole nother talk on what happened afterwards and the role of this festival community in helping people find a new home to come to, find a place to reinvent themselves, to heal, to learn how to build community, to learn how to connect with other people, and to learn how to 
share these substances in a nice set and setting where they can lead to growth and lead to good things. It's a different story, I'll tell you some other time. I just want to thank you all for coming by and listening to me tonight. Uh, it meant, meant a lot to me. And um, we're going to take a little bit of a break here, and then Daniel Pinchbeck will be on. So thank you very much.